What's that? You want to pack up everything you own and leave the entire solar system never to return? I don't want to watch TV right now. All right, fine. From the planet Isn't the moon, moon a star? The sun is a star. I'm going to say Mars. Eclipse. You can see the planet Eclipse. It's we don't star, know what the it? sun is. Is math related to science? Not Excuse a planet. Me, chunky. Numbers. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, Google. <laughs> A, a natural the moon satellite. Is a natural but satellite. things live on it. That, that means mean? it's a planet. You can't afford a Wi Fi box out here? It's about radiation. Yes. I don't like that at all. I don't even Me know what either. that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, alright, so you're like totally over everything, humans are already eyeing up nearby planets, and what you need is some solar distancing. <gasps> what are your options? Well, this Hefeweizen of a guy is a bit of a party pooper with his whole no running faster than light in the house rule. But you're a clever little brat that knows to look for loopholes, and there's an exploit hidden inside special relativity that you can use to produce something that works an awful lot like faster than light travel. In 1940, researchers in Denver were completely stoned, I mean stumped. They were studying muons, subatomic particles that form from cosmic ray collisions high up in the atmosphere. They decay very quickly within about one five hundred thousandth of a second, so hardly any of them should reach the ground, yet they were detecting many more than expected. To understand why, they had to consider the effects of relativity. Muons can travel at over 99.9% .9 the speed of light. While they do decay in just a few microseconds from their perspective, their massive speed causes length contraction, and that makes the distance that they have to travel negligible, allowing them to easily reach Earth's surface before they decay. Nature really cares about keeping the speed of light consistent from every perspective in every situation, so it bends over backwards in nearly every other way to make that happen. And if we're a bit crafty, we might be able to use that to our advantage to explore the cosmos. This delicious bag of chips expires in six months. Alpha Centauri is 4.37 light years away. If you travel towards it at 99.9% .9 the speed of light, your chips are going to taste like garbage when you get there, right? Well, not at all. You could even come back to Earth after a quick visit and both you and your chips would not have experienced the passing of six months, despite traveling almost nine light years. So how could you cover such a long distance in such a short time without traveling faster than light? Well, you couldn't. The thing is, you don't travel that distance at all. At close to the speed of light, the distance ahead of you massively shrinks. That is the nature of special relativity, and that's how those muons managed to reach the ground before they decayed. This site has a fun time and distance dilation calculator, and you can play with it yourself with the link in the description. If you travel to Alpha Centauri at only 80% light speed, you experience time passing at 60% its normal rate, and you'll get there in only 2.62 years. But a Another way to view this shift in reality is that the distance you would have to cover shrinks to only 2.622 light years. As we bump up the speed, this is amplified more and more until at 99 point this much percent the speed of light, the distance is shrunk to less than half the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and you would get there in under 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Some explanations are analogies, they're simply a way for us to better imagine an equation, but not this. This is 100% actually, literally real. Your GPS would be wildly inaccurate if satellites didn't compensate for relativity. Atomic clocks flown around on jets measure real time dilation. If I measure the distance between two objects, that feels like an absolute truth. But if I push two objects closer together, the distance shrinks, and that is no less real than the actual distance shrinking if I were moving through space faster. From the perspective of an observer on Earth, reaching Alpha Centauri will take you a minimum of 4.367 years, but it feels like we fixate on the perspective of the observer a bit too much, and we kind of project the limitations placed on observers onto the entire concept. Humans are explorers by nature, it's in our DNA. People used to leave their homes all the time, never to see or hear from the people that they knew again, it was pretty normal. You can never cross the ocean unless you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. If you're fine with flying off into the sunset like a cowboy rock star astronaut, then so what? 
NASA's Project Longshot in the 1980s studied nuclear pulse propulsion to potentially reach 4.5% the speed of light. Project Daedalus in the 1970s designed a probe that could reach Bernard's star at 12% the speed of light, but was forgotten since it required fusion energy, which is something that we're finally starting to sort out. The Light Sail Project could accelerate probes up to 20% light speed using existing technology, and NASA is actively developing technologies like bimodal NTP in EP so we can reach Mars in just 45 days. We're working up to being able to travel at Einstein numbing speeds, so where do you want to go? Kepler-22b orbits a sun-like star and appears to be within its habitable zone. It's 587 light-years away, but if you could manage 99.9999% the speed of light, it would only take you 10 months to get there. The star TOI-700 is home to several planets within the habitable zone, one of which is 95% the size of Earth. It's 100 light-years away, but traveling at 99.9% the speed of light, you'd be there in four and a half years. Add three Three more nines and it's only about a month and a half of travel. Feeling a bit more ambitious? The Andromeda Galaxy is two and a half million light years away, but traveling at this speed, the distance is contracted to just over two light weeks away. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Where do I sign? Well, there are a few minor formalities to disclose. Initial here and here and here and here and here and here and here. This is an approach that lets us, if only from our own perspective, travel much faster than light without breaking any laws of nature. But if it were that easy, it would be your mom. It's not just the actual propulsion that's a challenge. How do we cope for that long with intense radiation found in outer space? Dunno. How do we manage space debris when colliding with a tiny speck of dust will unleash enough energy to send you back to Hiroshima 1945? Dunno. Accelerating and decelerating at rates that won't obliterate people? Dunno, but it will add a lot of time to your trip if you prefer to not turn into jello. All of that requires innovation and engineering to solve, which we're pretty good at. But the biggest problem comes from, yup, this lad, and we can't engineer our way out of it. To go faster, you need more energy. No problem, throw some more gas into the mix or burn a bit more space juice. But our energy needs scale exponentially. Going 99.99% of light speed requires 100 times more energy than traveling at 95% light speed. For a small ship, it would take more energy than Earth consumes over millions of years to reach such speeds. And traveling at light speed would require infinite energy, which is why, you know, we can never do that. Now, if that burst your bubble, then maybe some horse manure will put the spring back in your step. The Great Horse Manure Crisis of 1894 was a serious issue, with thousands of working horses producing tons of natural waste every single day in cities like London and New York. They also only lived about three years on average, and their carcasses were often just abandoned in the streets, making a huge problem. It was predicted that in 50 years, every street in London will be buried under nine feet of manure. So in 1898, an international conference was held. The brightest minds from across the globe assembled for a 10-day conference, and then they gave up and went home after only three days, concluding that there was no solution to this problem. That was it. Cities and their economies were dependent on the horse, and cleaning the streets would require bringing in more horses, making the problem even worse. This was a huge, unsolvable problem that went away on its own shortly after. By only 1912, there were more cars in New York than horses. We don't know what innovations might change our lives even just next month or next year. Major breakthroughs in fusion power and shielding might be just around the corner. Inconsistencies between relativity and quantum mechanics prove that we have yet to figure everything out. The quantum world is weird, and things like entanglement, quantum tunneling, and virtual particles seem to be capable of genuinely functioning faster than the speed of light, even though their nature prohibits us from using them to transmit information. We still don't know if quantum gravity is actually a thing, and nobody can exclude 
breakthroughs in these areas allowing for faster than light travel, maybe even without leaving everyone else behind in time. As we learn from a whole bunch of course crap, predicting the possibilities of the future using only the tools of the present is a losing game. But when it comes time to roll the dice and do our darndest to visit the stars, humans have just the right amount of irrational insanity to pull it off.